Welcome to the HBM Test and Measurement FAQ video series. Hi, I am Bart Morick, HBM Application Engineer, and in this video I'm going to provide a demonstration showing the shunt calibration method in the Genesis High Speed 4 Channel Bridge Board. In this video, we will show you how the shunt calibration feature within Perception and the GN410 and 411 bridge card will allow you to verify the existing state of your strain gauge. A shunt calibration is a method that is used to verify the accuracy of a strain gauge by simulating a known strain. The features inside the GN410 and 411 cards allow the user to perform up to nine steps when performing a shunt calibration to check the accuracy and linearity of the channel under test. In this video, we will define the strain gauge circuit, explain how the GN410 and 411 inputs are set up, and the pins are configured. We will then perform a nine-step shunt calibration, review the results, and then conclude our presentation. In other HBM videos, we will discuss the theory about the Wheatstone Bridge and the strain gauge circuit. The basics of the theory are this. When a strain gauge is compressed, the grid in the gauge gets shorter and fatter, which causes the resistance in the gauge to decrease. When the gauge is stretched, the grid gets longer and thinner and the resistance goes up. Providing a very precise load on a test article is not easy and in most cases not practical. The ability to place a precision resistor value in parallel to the gauge causes a decrease in the equivalent resistance, thereby simulating a load that the amplifier measures. The placement of this parallel resistance in the circuit allows you to get a both a positive and negative or bidirectional deflection in your circuit. In this circuit, by placing the gauge across to R1, the equivalent resistance goes down and the output voltage goes up. By placing it across R2, the equivalent resistance goes down there and the output goes down. To perform the shunt calibration, you will need to make some physical connections from the gauge back to the 16-pin LIMO connector on the GN410 and 411 card. Wiring in this connector is not easy and should not be attempted if you are not trained at soldering. However, if you can solder a strain gauge, you can solder this connector. Please see our other videos on soldering or strain gauge wiring if you would like a refresher in the art of soldering. We're going to perform a 9-step bi-directional shunt on a 350 ohm quarter bridge strain gauge. In order to do this, we will need to install our strain gauge and two shunt calibration resistors in our circuit along with the 20K and 100K ohm permanently mounted shunt calibration resistors in every channel. Each GN41011 bridge channel has a removable bridge completion card. In our example, we soldered a 59.88K ohm shunt resistor in position C, cal position, which is our third internal shunt calibration resistor. Please note the position of the shunt resistor when placed in the socket so that you're able to install the socket back into the amplifier channel. Further information can be found in your Gen High Speed Operation Manual. Our external shunt calibration resistor is a value of 87.15K ohms installed near the gauge and wired into pins 13 and 14 of the connector. Connections made can be as simple as a two-wire quarter bridge connection, up to 10 plus wires depending on how critical your measurements need to be. In order to perform a bi-directional shunt calibration on our gauge, you're going to add a minimum of three jumpers to the 16-pin LIMO connector. A small jumper is required to go between pins 11, the plus remote calibration pin, to pin number 1, the plus voltage excitation. A second jumper needs to go between the pin 12, the negative remote calibration, and pin 2, the negative excitation voltage. And finally, a jumper between pin 15, the remote calibration common, and pin 6, the negative input amplifier. Note that in a quarter bridge circuit, the negative calibration circuit will be placed across the completion resistor and not the strain gauge. In half and full bridge circuits, the negative calibration circuit will be going across strain gauges. It is recommended that the wires used in the jumper should be very small, approximately 30 gauge wire, to prevent short circuits between the pins in the LIMO connector. The pins can be bridged on the solder cup, but caution must be used to make certain that no other short circuits are created. In this example, we will be making a continuous recording. We have a simple one-channel workbench and created meters that will give us a live mean update of the data being collected to monitor the values at each step of the shunt cal. 
The settings menu in Perception allows you to perform the shuncale on a single or multiple channels in the recorder or in the group. The quarter bridge strain gauge has been running long enough that the circuit is stable and the channel is balanced. The settings sheet for shunt verification has been placed into its own workbook to make the viewing of the test easier. Starting with the balanced circuit, we will enable the shunt calibration across the strain gauge with the internal shunt calibration resistors, switching in the standard 100 and 20k ohm resistors along with the user added 59.8k ohm resistor before switching in the external 87.15k ohm resistor. Allow each switch of the shunt resistor to be recorded for at least one second so that you have a wider range of data to review later. Disable the shunt calibration resistor and then change the mode to perform a negative shunt calibration and repeat all four steps and disable the shunt calibration to verify balance before stopping the acquisition. When completed, stop the acquisition and move the cursors to each level to note the mean value of each shunt on the channel. I also created a post-process meter that will give me a mean measurement between the cursors when I evaluate the results. Here you can use the power of perception to get your results. You can manually write down the values or use the log function to automatically post the results of each step directly to Excel or some other program. See some of our other how-to videos for more information on performing this. After the collection of the shunt calibration data, you can use perception to go back and compare the measured shunt calibration to the calculated values. In our example, my quarter bridge drain gauge had a published gauge factor of 2.13. A typical gauge factor has an error limit of about 1%. After performing your shunt calibration, run your tests, and then make another shunt calibration recording and make certain that your gauge wasn't damaged during the test. So in conclusion, performing a shunt calibration allows you to quickly verify the accuracy of your sensor and the Genesis High Speed GN410 or 411 amplifier. Well, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, please feel free to call, email, or visit our website for the latest product solutions and downloads at www.hbm.com.